So not too recently, I found out this issue when working on Sony s Log 3 footage in DaVinci White Gamut that not many people are talking about. Hey guys, I'm Danny, a friendly neighborhood colorist, and I've made a video on this before, but in this video, I just want to go through it more clearly so that you can get through the processes. And there's also a suggestion on the last video comment where there is a better and more elegant solution to this issue. But before we go into the solution, let me show you what is the issue that I'm talking about. So I first encountered this issue when I was shooting in Japan last year, and it totally came by accident. So on the right here, what you see is what well, I have Sony s 3 s Gamma 3 Cine, 2 Rex 9 Gamma 2.4, which is the normal conversion for color management. And on the right, what you're seeing is Sony s 3 to DaVinci White Gamut here, and from DaVinci White Gamut back to Rex 9 Gamma 2.4. So on the right, you will see that there is no yellows in the signboard, while if I turn this back to the direct conversion with Without the DaVinci Red Gamma workflow, you see that there's a lot of yellow in the signboard here. And this issue remains on other shots as well. So on the left is directly from one CST, and on the right is using the DaVinci Red Gamma workflow. So it's not just this footage alone, because I suspected that maybe this is because I was shooting 100 frames per second, but no. Like in this footage, you will also see slight result of that saturation compression, but this was shot in 25 frames. So I tried to replicate what I'm seeing with this shot right here. So on the left is a direct CSC and on the right is the DaVinci White Gamut and we can see the results. So right now hue is at zero degrees, which is red, pure red based on Aperture's T2C light tube. And now it's at 10 degrees, which you can see the biggest difference. So if you're shooting directly onto a bright high luminance light or subject, then this saturation compression will be very obvious. But on my face itself, you can see that there isn't that much of a difference, but I'll show you a shot later, which is not exactly shooting at a high luminance subject but there is still a tiny bit of difference. So this is for 10 degrees and this is for 15 degrees. There is still a difference. And for 20 degrees, there's lesser, of course. But on the subject itself, like my face, you don't really see that much of a compression. And this is at 30 degrees, right? So some of you might say that Okay, maybe this is because I haven't done my tone mapping or my gamut mapping right. So I'm going to demonstrate to you that that isn't really the case. So I'm going to switch over. So on my right now is a direct conversion using one CST. And on the left, I'm going to use DaVinci White Gamut. Okay, so let me set this up. And let's say it's the tone mapping. So I'm going to switch this to luminance mapping and let's set the custom max output to 10,000, which is what Colin Kelly does. And then for gamma mapping, let's do saturation compression. And you see that it's even worse. So let's do the same for this DaVinci Red Gamut. Luminance mapping, saturation compression. So it isn't correcting for anything. It still looks the same as if you are looks a bit more worse than the usual DaVinci White Gamut workflow. So if I switch it over to maybe saturation preserving, nope, this is not it at all. So I basically toggled with everything and it doesn't really work as well as I want it to. Okay, so I have a solution for this and it's more simple than you think. So this solution I have incorporated into my node tree, which is my power grids as well, which is we are going from Sony s Log 3 to DaVinci White Gamut and not directly from DaVinci White Gamut into Rex and Line. So I'm going to create a serial node before here and let's drag in another CST. And in this CST, let's go from DaVinci White Gamut to Sony s Log 3. Right. And then for this one, we are going from Sony s 3 to Rexel 9 right? So 
what I'm doing here is from Sony to DaVinci Wright Gamut and then from DaVinci Wright Gamut back to Sony and on the last note I'm going from Sony to Rec. 9 right so you can see that the flow of it you have to use three notes to complete this uh, Sony DaVinci Wright Gamut workflow right so these two will be at the end where your color management is and this one is technically your IDT and these are both your ODT output device transform so this way you can still work in the Winchy White Gamut in the middle here while using Sony footage without any saturation compression in the yellows on high luminance objects so if I apply this to the rest of my clips here you can see that everything will get normalized even on this clip let's see how is it going now now it's red and then we can see that yellow so i am still in the winchy white gamut and we can see that full yellow as if it was using one cst only so you might say that okay maybe if you're not directly shooting into a bright object like this then you don't have to use this middle note this intermediary note to convert it that's up to you if you want to take the risk and sometimes mess up your color like that i don't know why you would but then this is just one extra note so that if you shoot this way if you have a shot or footage that is has this very bright yellows then you don't have to worry at all because let me demonstrate to you on a normal footage such as this so there's nothing really pop in this footage there's only her skin tones and maybe a little bit of red on her lips and I'm going to flip over. So on the left is single CST, on the right is Domitri Right Gamut. I'm going to enhance my waveform. And if I flip over, so focus your eyes on the scopes. And by theory, it should be the same thing. But if you notice the waveform here, there is actually a slight shift in the rates. So the rates are moving. And you are still getting a different result, just not as drastic as if there is something bright like this in the frame you will see a slight shift in the yellows which are compressed just that it's not that obvious so for safety i will always use a intermediary Dawinci white gamble back to sony and then from sony to rex 9 so if you're one of the users of my visionary power grades what you will find is in the pro note 3 so what I have here is an ODT, which is whatever you want it to go out from. And then I have the intermediary node over here, the Winchivai Gamut to Sony, right? So you can turn this on if you're working with Sony footage. And in the ODT, you can do Sony to Rex 9 Gamma 2.4. So that is the solution to this issue. I hope you found this video useful. If you do, please drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.